In this video, we are going to cover the test battery by Luo Maioki to assess movement control dysfunction in patients with nonspecific low back pain. Hi and welcome back to Physio Tudors. Almost everyone experiences low back pain at least once in a lifetime. Only 10% of cases of patients suffering from low back pain can be attributed to specific pathology. We are talking about fractures, tumors, spinal stenosis, nerve root pathology and such. The other 90% of cases are nonspecific, meaning there is no pathoanatomic cause for the pain. Nonspecific low back pain can further be subdivided in non-mechanical and mechanical. Pain in the non-mechanical group can be attributed to central maladaptive processes influenced by the presence of yellow flags and other psychosocial factors. Thumbs up if you want a video explaining different forms of pain. This non-mechanical low back pain makes up around a third of the non-specific cases. The other 70% are mechanical and either movement or posture dependent. Oftentimes, nothing is structurally wrong. The patient simply has lost control over the conscious movements in the low back leading to pain. Lou Mayoki et al. have developed a six-test screening tool to assess movement control dysfunction in patients with nonspecific low back pain. They found substantial intra- and inter-radar reliability with a kappa value of greater than 0.6. Secondly, there was no significant difference between novice and experienced clinicians rating the patient's movement. Furthermore, when low back pain patients performed these tests, there was a clear significant difference in movement control to healthy subjects. The first test of the battery is the so-called waiter's bow. It assesses control over the lumbar spine during a hip hinge. The goal is to bend forwards from the hips whilst maintaining a neutral lumbar spine. Secondly, the patients are instructed to perform a posterior pelvic tilt which induces flexion at the lumbar spine. Third is single leg stance. The patient is instructed to stand with the feet apart at one third of the intertrochanter distance. Then the patient proceeds to stand on one leg. The amount of lateral shift is measured. The norm is usually 8 cm and a discrepancy of more than 2 cm between sides is considered abnormal. The next test is sitting knee extension. For the test, the patient is in upright sitting position on the bench with the legs hanging freely. The lumbar lordosis is corrected and then the patient is instructed to extend the knee without movement, i.e. flexion, of the low back. Next, the patient's movement control is assessed during forward and backward rocking and four-point kneeling position. For forward rocking, the patient is instructed to move the pelvis forwards without extending the low back. For backward rocking, the patient is asked to transfer the pelvis backwards whilst keeping the back neutral. The last test is the prone knee bend. The patient lies in prone position and is asked to bring the heel to the buttock. Typically, the waiter's bow, sitting knee extension and backward rocking are difficult to perform for patients with a flexion pattern according to O'Sullivan. On the other hand, a patient with an extension pattern will have difficulties with executing the prone knee bend and forward rocking without involving the lumbar spine. At last, the single leg stance could help you identify someone with a lateral shift pattern. So what can you do with a patient once you've figured out their movement control dysfunction? Be sure to check out the video right here to learn about some interventions. As always, thanks for watching and if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the chance. This was Andreas for PhysioTutors. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.